From humble vaudeville beginnings to the popular television series RuPaul's Drag Race, the art form of drag has evolved into an expressive movement of pride and celebration. The origins of the popular term remain disputed, but the art form itself has been a significant part of popular culture since the 20th century. To celebrate this art form, FIB has compiled a list of who we consider to be the most influential drag queens of all time. Let's meet the queens of old. The Rocky Twins. Norwegian brothers Lief and Paul Washberg were notorious in Paris for their talent as jazz singers and their uncanny impersonations of the famous Hungarian-American twin actresses, the Dolly Sisters. They made their debut in 1928 at the Casino de Paris show and were an instant hit. Soon after, they starred in the big-budget film Le Argent and continued to make a name for themselves in Europe through their performances at venues such as the famous Kit Kat Club in Berlin. The Rocky Twins made their way to America in the 1930s, where they became a beloved drag act at the Ship Cafe in California. Here they caught the eye of the film director Edmund Golding, who cast them in Blondie of the Follies in 1932. A favourite of the Hollywood party scene, the twins continued to perform at private parties, nightclubs and on stage until their split in 1937. Barbette. Born Van der Clyde in Texas, 1899, Barbette won acclaim as one of Europe's most famous drag queens. His career began when he answered an ad to replace one of the trapeze artists in the Alpharetta Sisters. Quickly discovering the drama of the show did not work with a male aerialist, Clyde agreed to dress as a woman. From there, he refined his solo act and made his way into vaudeville, first revealing himself as Barbette at the Harlem Opera House in 1919. At the end of his shows, which Clyde did in drag, he would rip off his wig and flex his muscles, a gimmick that quickly made him very popular. Barbette went on to perform at venues such as Casino de Paris, the Moulin Rouge and Foyle's Bergier and embarked on an international tour with the Ringling Brothers and Barnab and Bailey Circus. Julian L. Tinge Julian L. Tinge became one of the most famous drag queens across Europe and America thanks to his uncanny female impersonations on stage and screen. Oh, his movements were very graceful and uh, he was beautifully lit. Having dressed up as a girl from a young age and taken dance lessons to develop his skills, El Tinge gained popularity in vaudeville before being spotted by producer E.E. E. Weiss, who plucked him from obscurity and put him in the spotlight. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Well, here I am back in Hollywood making my first talking picture. A top performer, El Tinge's career peaked in 1910 when he starred in the musical comedy The Fascinating Widow. He became one of the highest paid stage actors of the time, worth $250,000. His work on the stage led him to film and he featured in movies such as The Countess Charming in 1917 and Madame Behave in 1925. Bert Savoy. Bert Savoy began his performing career at 14 as a taxi dancer and hired dance partner for the patrons in dance halls. After being arrested as a hack fortune teller, he married a showgirl in 1904 and the two worked in vaudeville together. Savoy became famous for his over-the-top costumes and campy performances. Hair and makeup and fashion and cleavage. And his signature lines, you must come over and you don't know the half of it, dearie. Don't know the half of it, dearie. Taking his characters from vaudeville to Broadway, Savoy quickly became one of America's most famous drag queens until a fateful thunderstorm ended his career when he was struck by a lightning on a bench. With soft features and a soprano voice, Laverne Cummings was one of the 20th century's most convincing drag queens. He was one of the only female impersonators to forego the wig and display his naturally long locks. His ability to sing both high and low notes made him a commodity in the nightclub circuit. I'm a split voice singer. I sing baritone also. So deep within my searching for happiness I fear. And after years of touring with the Jewel Box, he landed a contract-based role at Finocchio's, a popular San Francisco nightclub famous for its female impersonators who could sing like women. They would say, wow, is that his voice? So I was what was called a split voice singer because I could sing in both voices. So that was the beginning of the persona of Laverne. Whose stage name is Carlotta. Carlotta. 
Australian cabaret performer Carlotta, nicknamed Queen of the Cross, began her career as a cast member and later headliner of the long-running male revue Les Girls. A singer and comedian, she became an instant attraction for visitors to Sydney. In 1973, she made her screen debut when she appeared on the soap opera Number no. 96 as a transsexual character whose identity is revealed at the end. Honey, now listen to me first. There's something about me you have to know. Carlotta had had her sex change three years prior, the first operation to be made public thanks to her status as a drag icon. Well, I guess when it's all boiled down, I was born a woman in the shell of a man. She continued to perform and tour internationally with Les Girls until 1992 and is one of the inspirations behind the 1994 film The Adventures of Priscilla Queen of the Desert. I think it's something that's born in you. See, I didn't like the idea of standing in front of a mirror and having boobs and having that down there. He said to me, you are a woman, aren't you? Flawless Sabrina, also known as Mother Flawless Sabrina, was an LGBTQIA activist, actress and drag performer famous for her pioneering efforts to destigmatize drag queens in the 1960s. She was one of the first widely known drag queens in the US, organizing various drag pageants around the country, including Miss Philadelphia and the Miss Nationals. She soon turned her talent to film and made a number of documentaries. Her 1967 film, The Queen, about her last drag queen pageant, won an award at the Cannes Film Festival. Could you give us some of your political beliefs? Kill everyone now. Condone first degree murder. Advocate cannibalism. Eat shit. Described as the queen of the century by People magazine, Divine has been a popular drag icon and cult figure since the 1970s. Divine became immersed in Maryland's counterculture scene, where he became friends with director John Waiters. After appearing in a number of Waiters short films, he achieved cult status with his role in 1972's Pink Flamingos. I didn't think of Devine as a female impersonator. I thought him as a, a great character actor that started his career playing a homicidal maniac and ended up playing a loving mother, which is a pretty good stretch, especially when you're a 300-pound man. Devine diversified his career by doing onstage avant-garde performances alongside the San Francisco drag collective, The Coquettes, and went on to enjoy a disco career with songs such as You Think You're a Man, I'm So Beautiful, and Walk Like a Man. Walk like a man. Dame Edna Everidge. Despite being a character played by actor Barry Humphreys, Dame Edna Everidge has come to be hailed as a cultural icon. Now the point of comedy is not just looking funny, it's use of language. Created to satirise the cult of celebrity, class snobbery and general prudishness, Everidge is an exuberant persona that provides humorous and scathing commentaries on the state of society. I am being a wicked old tease. I'm pulling your jamb. 